In the previous part, we talked about how to generate a network from a model. And next, let's talk about the inverse process, how to find the best model given the network and therefore detect communities. So here's the big picture. Given a graph, we want to find the best AGM and its corresponding affiliation graph M, the number of communities C and, and the parameters PC. And the idea is to use maximum likelihood estimation or MLE. So here's how MLE usually work. We're usually given the data X and we assume that the data is actually generated by some model f theta, where f is a model and theta is the model parameters. And we want to estimate p of x given theta. And this is the probability that our model f with parameter theta that generated the data x. And the goal of MLE is to find the most likelihood model that could have generated data. So basically we are trying to find the optimal theta such that this P of X given theta is the largest. So how do we do MLE for graphs? You may have noticed that the AGM model actually generates a probabilistic adjacency matrix. And remember that previously we say that given the AGM parameters, we actually are able to compute the probability of uh, probability that there is a edge between any pair of nodes, U and V. So basically, we will have a uh, probabilist probabilistic adjacency matrix, something like this, and we will generate the adjacency matrix of the graph. So basically we will flip all the coins such that uh, each entry in the matrix is either zero or one. So basically for each pair of nodes U, V here, AGM will give the probability P, U, V of them being linked. And then we will just flip all these bias coins. For example, we can flip this coin to see whether or not there is an edge between, between let's say node three and, and node one. And then we can, and we can compute the likelihood of the AGM generating the graph using this equation. We can see that this equation is just a product of a lot of terms. So basically for each node pair where there is an edge, we have a term P U P U V. And for each node pair where there is there isn't an edge, we have a term one minus P U V. So basically P U V is the uh, the probability that U and V has an edge. And formally speaking, given a graph G with the with the node set V and the edge set E, as well as the parameter theta, we will calculate the, uh, the likelihood that the, pr the parameter theta will have generated the graph G. So basically this is written down as PG given theta. And let's say that we're given the parameter theta here on the left, and we're also given a graph here on the right, then we will first compute the probabilistic adjacency matrix using this equation that we have talked about before. And then we will compute the, the likelihood of this graph given this probabilistic adjacent, adjacency matrix using this equation. So again, this is just a product of all the terms and for, for, for each pair of nodes with an edge, we have a P UV and for each pair of nodes without an edge, we have a term that is one minus PUV. As a more concrete example, let's say that we have, we have this graph here 
uh, of four nodes and we also have the parameter theta here, which basically says that node one, two, three belongs to community C and node two, three, four belongs to community D. We can see that correspondingly, this is community C and this is community D. Then using these parameters and as, as well as the uh, corresponding parameter PC and PD, we can then calculate um, the probability that this edge between node one and node two uh, is generated. So basically we can calculate it as one minus one minus PC because both of them are from community C and we, have, we can do the same for, for P13, which is the probability that there is an edge between one and three. And for the edge between node two and node three, it's a little bit more complicated because both node two and node three are belongs to two communities. They belong to both community C and community D. And for the edges between two and three and three and four, we, have, we can do a similar stuff. And for the edge, the non-existent X, basically uh, P14, we can, uh, we need to use the epsilon because one and four, they actually belong to different communities. So basically to calculate the likelihood of this whole graph, we only need to compute the products of all these terms. And note that this P, uh, this node one and node four, they don't have an edge. So basically we need to uh, use a term that is one minus P14, which is here. And usually this epsilon is very close, uh, close to zero. Therefore this whole term will be very close to one. And therefore we can drop this factor. Basically our goal is to find uh, the optimal theta, which consists of this four subset of parameters such that these likelihood can be maximized. And often we will take the logarithm of the likelihood and we call it log likelihood and we will try to uh, maximize the log likelihood instead. Uh, there, there are two reasons for doing this. The first reason is, is that it's usually uh, analytically nicer to to have the log to have the log likelihood, and the second reason is that it's, the log likelihood is usually uh, more numerically stable than the likelihood itself. Now let's consider a simpler problem. Uh, let's say that uh, most of the parameters inside theta is already given, and we we only need to find uh, the optimal PC. Remember PC is the probability that there is a link between two nodes if both of the nodes belong to community C. So this is easy because uh, we just need to write down the log likelihood as a function of P, as a function of PC uh, by computing each each P uh, each term of PUV. And then we can find a PC that maximizes uh, the log likelihood. And the reason why this is easy, it's because the PC here is actually a continuous value. Therefore, you can, for example, just uh, compute the gradient of this objective function with regard to PC, and you can just use gradient descent or gradient ascent to find uh, the optimal PC. However, if our goal is to find a full set of parameters B that consists of four subsets of parameters, and it would be much, much more difficult because finding the full set C actually means finding the bipartite affiliation uh, network. This is actually a, a difficult combinatorial optimization problem. And there's actually no nice way of doing this. So since fitting this B is too hard, let's consider if we can just change or relax the model so that it's easier to fit. And this would be the focus of the next part in the lecture.